Welcome to this special edition of Africa 360 as we commemorate and indeed celebrate Africa Day. We are the current affairs show at the forefront of African news where we go beyond the headlines to bring you a fresh perspective on what's happening in your continent. I'm Chris Marileng and this is Africa 360. In this edition, for years, it's been described as the dark continent, often portrayed as a region of war, famine and disease. But just how accurate is this view of Africa? This week, the continent marked Africa Day and we take stock of the progress that's been made on our continent in the past half century. This and more coming up on Africa 360. The 25th of May traditionally marks Africa Day. For many years, the event has been a celebration of African unity. It dates back to 1963 when the Organization of African Unity was founded in Ethiopia. So as the continent commemorates this day here on Africa 360, we take stock of the progress African countries have made since gaining their independence. We also focus on the key areas of governance, democracy, and of course, economic development. Recently, I caught up with renowned Professor Tandika Mkandawire, the former director of the United Nations Research Institute for social development to discuss exactly these issues. Let's take a look at how that worked out. <laughs> Professor Tandika Kandwiri, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Africa 360. Thank you, Ayato. Is it good to be back in Africa? It's always a great, great, great in Africa. It's, it's very, very um, inspiring, but also very, it just feels home, you know, it's, it's home. Prof, for, uh, you know the layman like me, you know the person at home viewing this now, how would you describe the state of the state in Africa right now. Are we in a good place or is there reason to be concerned about the way uh, the state is developing in terms of economy, uh, social, political? Well, first, the state in Africa is not dead. Because there are some, there are sometimes you know, people declare that Africa's state is failed, is, is dead. Uh, and there's a tendency to think that the Somali case is the norm in Africa, which is not true, of course. Eh? Uh, the African states, the African people are not happy with their state. Uh, so uh, that's probably the most important uh, criteria to use. They're not happy with their state. Why aren't they happy, Professor? Uh, many of them haven't performed well in terms of delivery of, of, of basic things like law and order, uh, social services, uh, economic well-being. Um, so they, they have not met the ex expectations of the African people. Well, I'm sure as you heard from uh, the professor, the continent is still grappling with mammoth challenges. Perhaps the most pressing of these is the one that has bedeviled the continent for over 50 years, and that is the issue of good governance. Let's take a look at how the continent is doing in terms of the overall score. Well, as you can see from the scores as they come up, Mauritius in terms of the Mo Ibrahim Index uh, is leading the pack, uh, followed very closely by Cape Verde. The interesting thing about those two is that they're islands. Maybe that has something to do with uh, their governance record. And of course, the landlocked country of Botswana coming in third and fifth is South Africa at 71%. Uh, Let's just take a look at how that map would play out in terms of the overall result. As you can see, the countries that are shaded darker in terms of this map are representative of the, the countries that are doing uh, much better in terms of governance. As you can see, southern tip of Africa, including South Africa, Botswana, and Namibia, apparently doing well in terms of the index. Interestingly enough, we see the center of the country there, the DRC, Angola, Sudan, uh, Chad, not doing so well. Well, to give us more perspective on this, let's take a look at this brief insert. The issue of governance has perplexed many African countries. Poor leadership is blamed for the slow pace of social and economic development on the continent. This has led to widespread poverty, unemployment and ultimately conflict. But the picture isn't all bad. According to the Mo Ibrahim Index, which rates countries on the quality of governance, there are a few that stand out. Botswana, the Seychelles, Mauritius and Cape Verde have consistently ranked in the top five for overall governance performance and score highly in safety and rule of law, participation and human rights, economic opportunity and human development. 
the index has noticed a significant improvement among many other countries. However, while there's been marked progress in sustainable development and economic opportunities, there is an alarming downturn in countries protecting their citizens. The issues of safety, human rights and respecting the rule of law continue to be ignored by many African leaders. So I asked Professor Mkandawiri about this burning issue of good governance and the legacy the colonial system has left uh, uh, for our continent. Uh, look at what his thoughts were. One would, could also very well argue that when you look at the state in Africa, that this is really a remnant, a throwback to the colonial past and that Africa really hasn't had the opportunity to organize organic states yes. that reflect the interest of these people who you claim are unhappy with the performance of the state. Well, I'm not sure that is true. You know, the colonial state was a, essentially a garrison. You know, it was very small. You know, it was very small and very, its reach was incre incredibly limited. Uh, in that sense, African states have much, much, much wider reach and, uh, and, 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 and therefore not comparable to colonial state mm -hmm. in any way. In many times, people think of when they think of the colonial, the good old days of the colonial government. You know, if you go to Nairobi, you can actually see how far the colonial Nairobi was. Something like ninety percent of what you see in Nairobi is post-colonial. So, mm -hmm. and and that's about true almost every country. Most of the stuff that you see, uh, you know, I know in Malawi, at, at Independence, there were I think about sixty kilometers of tar tarmac. And so everything you see there was post-colonial in that mm -hmm. sense. So it's not the same thing as the colonial state, and it's a relationship with people. With this population is very different. It's not an mm. occupying state, you know, mm. and and part of the anger people have is that it, it should not behave. You know, it, it you know it, the the expectations about it were uh, much higher than what the colonial state delivered. So, are you arguing that uh, a lot of the post-colonial leaders have overpromised and, in essence, underdelivered, leading to this grievance that you uh, highlight amongst the the masses? I think generally. You know, the younger generation of Africa is a very young continent, right? Uh, and with, unfortunately, some of the oldest leaders in the world. This, this is one of the bizarre things about Africa, a young continent led by old men. Uh, the, the young people are very well informed what's going on uh, in the rest of the world. And, and many of them, actually, if, if you try to suggest that the colonial, you know, because of our colonial history, we're doing badly, they, 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 they won't accept that. Because what, what they have seen in their life has been you know, black rule. So they're angry at their leadership today and they don't want to listen to, to, listen to the debates about external you know, actors and all that. And, and they see that countries in Asia are moving faster than we are and, and, and they cannot see any reason why Asia is moving faster than Africa is.